Hey everyone, welcome back to Blue Bob's channel. Today we have a very, very exciting first time experience for the channel, and that is our very first ever game review. Um, the game that we're choosing to review today is Steam World Dig 2, and this game, this game I would say to complete takes a about six and a half to seven and a half hours, uh, maybe six and a half to eight. And if you want to be a completionist, I have put about eleven to eleven and a half hours in, and I have I have collected every artifact, I have found every gear, um, I have one hundred percent of the map. However, there is one last thing called the trials, I believe, that I have not yet completed. In fact. Later in this video, you're gonna see me show you some of the footage of that part of what that is. Um, so that's the last thing I have to do, but I have considered that I have beat the game, I beat the final boss, I've collected all the collectibles that I can. So this is SteamWorld Dig 2 game review. So SteamWorld Dig 2, I have no experience with the first one, but it does reference the first one a little bit in regards to, I believe, the characters are similar, and that is you are a, I'm gonna call them a robot, I'm not sure exactly what they are called, but you are kind of a blue robot, um, or at least your robot has a blue face, and I believe her name is Deb, and you are looking for your friend Rusty, and I believe Rusty was in the first one, um, again, I haven't played it yet, and you're looking for him and trying to find him because he had disappeared. And you stumble upon a town, a mining town, and you they say that they had seen him and he went down into the mine. And so you're trying to track him down, and that's kind of the whole narrative with the story. As far as gameplay, um, gameplay is you it's pretty simple. WASD, it's it's a 2D platformer, I would say. However, you do control a pickaxe. Um, you can also end up unlocking a kind of like a almost like a rocket launcher I would say a grappling hook um, you can also unlock a kind of a jack that goes and breaks the rock um, so those are a few things and you can also unlock a jet pack so as level progresses you will need to go back to certain areas because there may be some certain areas that had secrets or parts of the level that you couldn't quite reach because you hadn't unlocked um, a certain skill if you will or item to use now they do have a fun player progression and so as I mentioned earlier I said something about collecting gears so gears are used to upgrade your player so not only do you have to use money that you get by selling either selling gems or you can technically unlock um, on when you upgrade your pickaxe I believe or your armor that whenever you kill an enemy you get coins so the way to make money is again by selling gems or killing enemies if you have that skill unlocked and as you upgrade items so I upgrade my pickaxe okay now I have I can use gears to upgrade the skill um, or to select a certain skill set on the pickaxe and that is completely up to you in fact I'm going to release a video it's gonna if you wanna click on the link above that shows my ideal skill tree set for the character and for the game. I didn't want to release it in this because I didn't want any spoilers in this. I just want to talk about my opinion of the game, what the game is about. So, but if you want to check out that, it will have spoilers because I will probably go through when it's beneficial to use what, as well as why the certain skills are more ideal. But my big recommendation is um, to try to get as many gears as possible, which means try to find those little secrets that they have hiding around because there's quite a few of them um, and that's really fun I do enjoy having to try and find um, find things that are hidden and I will mention there is one skill that I will mention in this because it's not too big of a spoiler but there is a skill where you can actually it will help it will make it easier to identify secret places and they will kinda glow on your screen I recommend getting that because it took me about two to two and a half hours to find the remaining secrets that I had missed as I was playing early on and I literally went back and on the very first section I had missed I had missed something because the cracks in the rock that resemble the secrets are 
pretty darn small and can be kind of difficult to see if you're obviously if you're looking for gems or you're looking for enemies and you're trying to get away from somebody really fast you might just run past it but if you unlock that skill it will actually kind of sparkle if you will so this game I would say this game in my opinion this was a very fun game so I got it for free I believe it is naturally twenty dollars on Steam um, I could be wrong but I got this game for free because of Stadia so this is technically my first not only game review but this is my first Stadia game review as well um, and this game is in my opinion I think it is totally worth the money um, I sunk again I've so far I've put about probably probably up to 12 hours into it now and it's um it was really fun it was really entertaining it really kept you going like I started the game and I could not stop playing it like it, it I physically had to pull myself away from the computer because it was 1130 at night and I had to work in the morning so it is that kind of a game where it really captivates you um, they also have really fun so there's a little blue ghost kind of guy who almost in my opinion resembles like he's kind of like a virus or I think that they were maybe the bad guys in the end of in the first game um, so that's again where maybe playing the first game would be smart would be good I'd read somewhere that you can still play the first game after playing the second game and there's no issue but there is a little blue guy his name's Fen he's really cute um, and he is kind of almost like a comical character where he just wants to create chaos um, in the whole world and so you end up finding him um, but normally it's yeah it's a little bit I would say there's partial partial amount of grinding in the game it's not it's not that bad um, obviously you have to go dig you have to dig collect resources go sell them upgrade your stuff um, but overall it, it it is a very entertaining very fun game um, I would I would probably if I had to give it a score I would probably give it an 8.59 personally um, the the graphics were great the soundtrack was great um, I would say the only down the only downfall which really isn't much of a downfall is I would have liked maybe more more game just a, just a little bit more game um, I think that there were maybe just about three to four areas to explore um, again, if you're spending $20, I always like to believe that if I buy a game, I'm going to get basically $1 for hour of gameplay. So if I buy a game for $20, I want to play that. I want to be enticed and want to play that game for 20 hours to hit that $1 an hour. For example, Assassin's Creed Odyssey. I'm pretty sure I bought that for uh, $30. It was on sale. Um, and I've already put 25 hours in, and I, I think I'm like maybe 20% through the game so that is something that is definitely going to produce that dollar an hour or even better result so that would be my my one thing but other than that I mean the graphics are great the storylines great the, the you know the plot is great the user interface is it's it's all it's all incredible um, it all worked really well on stadia there was there was no issues whatsoever um, so I would say definitely an eight and a half to a nine for this game for me personally it is a super fun one. It's kid friendly. Um, yes, there are little little spike beetles that you have to take care of, and snails, and you know, obviously there's, there's bad guys, but there's nothing scary about it. There's nothing bloody and gory about it. So this is a kid friendly game as well, um, and overall, just a very entertaining game. In the end, you have to face a boss. Um, they even they even reference in the trials a little bit of Bowser, where you have to. Um, the old Mario games where when you came up on Bowser you had to jump over him and hit the little um, button behind him. I always thought it looked like an axe because then the, the bridge underneath him would fall and he, he would then fall into the lava and die. They kind of reference that a little bit in the uh, in the trials, um, one of the levels. So that, that was pretty funny to uh, re reflect on and recall in the past. So, But overall, it's a great game, you guys. I'd, I'd highly recommend picking it up. Um, it was a blast to play. I really enjoyed it, and there is a, there is a very high chance that I'm going to be picking up SteamWorld Dig the First. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have an amazing day.